And I just pray that God would give us ears to hear. And I'm glad to be here tonight. Amen. I'm glad for each one of you all that's here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 7. And um, it, it says there, and we'll read down here a little bit, down to verse number 19 as we read together. The Bible says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. What a scary thought that is. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. That provocation is why I reference to you Numbers chapter 14. And that'll be our homework assignment tonight. We're not going to read the whole chapter of Numbers 14, but we're going to preach from that chapter. So I want you to read it when you get home and make sure, check up on me. Amen. Make sure I told you right. But he said, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren lest there be in any of you. Now, he's not talking to unbelievers here because he, he just said brother. And he said, take heed, brother, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Can you imagine, uh, imagine believers having an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God? He said, but exhort one another daily, daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Now we know that verse is not telling us that we have to do something to keep ourselves saved. We know tonight as, as, as Bible believers that we're kept by the power of God. Amen. Into the day of redemption, we're sealed. We know that we can't lose our salvation tonight. That verse says, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, again, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? I don't want to grieve God. With whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you tonight to, to bless dear Lord God, Lord, uh, as believers tonight, Lord, those of us that uh, can look to a place where we put our faith and trust in Christ, dear God, we know in whom we have believed. And we're persuaded that he's able to keep that which we've committed to him against that day. But yet, God, help us as believers in this generation, in this day and age in which we live. Dear Lord God, whenever we, we have a 24-hour news cycle reminding us, Lord, of how it's impossible to do it, and then how far away revival is. And God, how, how, how desperately hopeless the situation is as we're reminded, dear Lord God, that there's no use even trying. There's no hope. We may as well give up. God, help us not to fall victim to an unbelieving heart. And God, help us as a, this generation not to, not to give up on God. In your name we pray. Amen. There's a story in the Bible. You can have a seat there. There's a story in the Bible about a little lady that I don't I have no idea where she heard it. But somewhere along the way, she had heard about Jesus. And and in her in her mind and, and no one preached this to her, but in her mind, she had come up with this. She had been sick for, for a long time. And the Bible said that she had spent all that she had on doctors and that she was none the better. 
Doesn't that make sense? Amen. Years she had gone that way. And, and, and uh, uh, everything, every doctor that she'd heard, every cure. Can you imagine if she had the internet? And man, and all the cures that she would have tried and, and all the different. Can you imagine her vitamin rack? And I mean, really, times aren't any different now than they used to be. And this poor lady suffered an issue of blood. We don't know exactly what it was, but it was something that she knew was, was terminal. And there was no hope for it. And all the doctors, had, all they had done was taken her money and had not given her any hope. But somewhere along the way, she come up with this idea. And no one preached it to her as far as we know. But she come up with this idea. Idea. She said, if I could just get to Jesus, I don't even have to talk to him. I don't even have to, I don't even have to have an audience with him. I, all I, if I could just get to him and touch the hem of his garment, she said, you know what? She said, I, not, I think he'll, I'll be whole. She said, I know that if I could just touch Amen. the hem of his garment, everything will be made right. And would you believe that that lady knew exactly what she was talking Amen. about as Jesus was walking through the multitude and he was on his way uh, to, uh, uh, to, to attend to, the, to a daughter there uh, that was sick. And as he was on his way, uh, Jesus stopped in the midst of all that crowd and people pushing on him. And he said, who had touched me? He said, there's virtue that's going out of me. He said, somebody's touched me. And his disciples said, well, Master, how can we tell you who it is? There's all these people around here. And Jesus said, no, somebody has touched me. Somebody has come to me believing that I'm God, that I am who I say I am, believing that with God all things are possible. And Jesus said, somebody has touched me. And that woman went away whole. Would you believe that after that happened, days after that, there were people coming along trying to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And listen, hey, because they had heard that there was something about Jesus that was different. Would to God, uh, you and I could just get back to letting this old world know that there's something different about Jesus. Amen. When he's, we've been touched uh, uh, by Him and, and He's come along and He's made everything different in our life. And I was thinking about that song as we were singing there, the very first song. It said, Oh, what a wonderful wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wander in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a, oh, what a wonderful, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Born of the Spirit, uh, with life from, from above, uh, uh, to, to God's family divine, uh, justified uh, by, uh, through Calvary's uh, love. Oh, what a standing is mine. And, and uh, all the transaction was quickly was made. When as a sinner I came, uh, then it says, took of the offer of grace he did proffer. He saved me. Oh, praise his dear name. I'm glad that when Jesus saved me, he saved me completely. Amen. I'm right. saved and secured. Heaven Amen. is my home. There's nothing going to, there, there's some days I don't feel saved. There's some days I don't even act saved. I hate to tell you that. And there's some days you don't feel saved. Amen. Right. And I'm glad tonight that salvation is not based on a feeling. I, there's some days I, I don't think I ought to be preaching. There's lots of times the devil reminds me of that. And he'll say to you, man, you don't belong up there. You shouldn't be preaching. And I just have to say, well, devil, you didn't, you're not the one that called me to preach. Amen. You're not the one that appointed that ministry in my life. It was the God of heaven. And tonight I just Amen. want to say you and I need to believe God. Just like we believed him the day we got saved. We believed when the preacher Amen. said, come into Jesus, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. You believe when someone preached about that amazing grace, uh, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see you believe when someone said there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood Amen. lose all their guilty stains I don't know what message it was the night you got saved but you believe that Jesus Christ would save you Amen. and you came and you accepted Christ as your Amen. Savior my, my dad, I told this just the other day, my dad was 27, 28 years old. He was in the, uh, uh, he, he was out in California when he was about 25 or 26 years old and he was still in the Marine Corps. He was in San Francisco of all places. 
But while he was out there in, in San Francisco uh, back in the uh, all the late 50s, early 60s, somewhere in there, he was getting ready to get on a bus and a young man walked up to him, preacher, with a gospel track and handed him a gospel track and uh, something like this right here, just walked up to him and handed it to him. My dad, a young man, had no use to hear that at the time and he took that track and he threw it down. He looked at it and threw it down and he, he made a point to let that young man know that he had no use for Jesus. He had no use use for the gospel. The only thing my dad had ever heard about God or about the gospel, his dad had set him down one time, took a $20 bill out and said, son, he said, that's the only thing that matters in life right there. That's what will get you through is just being able to earn a, earn a buck. And that's what will get you through. And that's the only thing my dad knew about the Lord, about Jesus. He'd never been to church. And he had no use for that. But from the time that young man gave him that gospel track, it bothered him. It lingered in his yeah. mind. There was an unrest that began to churn up on the inside and about a year and a half later uh, he was sitting out here at a church somewhere at a street meeting and my uncle Bob Fields was preaching that night his first sermon that he'd ever preached in his life and he preached that night God forbid that I should glory saving the cross of Jesus Christ and he preached not knowing any not having any idea what he was doing his very first sermon and he gave an invitation, not knowing how to give an invitation, not knowing what he was doing, but he gave the invitation. It, isn't it something how God uses us despite of who we are? If we'll just, Amen. if we'll just believe God and just open our mouth and let God work and, and just let God have his way. Hey, God's still God. God said in the book Amen. of Numbers chapter 14, there's a key verse in there. God said, I will be glorified in all the earth. All the earth will see my glory. And God is interested in one thing tonight, not you and I getting glory. But God is interested tonight that He gets the glory. He wants His creation to know that there is one God and there's only one. Amen. Despite all the atheists and all the evolutionists and all the rest of them, there's one God. Amen. And His name is one. And listen, that, that night my dad heard that invitation. He looked over at my mom. They hadn't been married very long. Had no idea. He never planned anything. But he looked at her that night and he said, you know what? He said, I think I'll do that. And he walked the aisle that night and got saved. Amen. God saved him from his sin. God wrote his name down in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Amen. And my dad's been with the Lord now almost 20 years. I thank God for the night he got saved. Amen. Amen. I wasn't 27, 28 when I got saved. I was seven when I got saved. Amen. I was, I, I got saved on my way home from church. God saved me. But tonight I want you to know this, that there's salvation in none other but in Jesus Christ. Amen. And we believe that. Amen. That fourth, that third verse says, now I have a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven. Maybe. That's not what it says, is it? I have a future in heaven for sure. Amen. There, uh, then in those man, there in those mansions, sublime. Oh, and, and it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believed. Folks have a hard time with that word believe. I'm amazed whenever I hear so many people, they'll use the term easy believism. And I know exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about somebody just come along and saying, look, you want to go to heaven when you die? Yeah, okay, we'll say this prayer. And they don't take the Bible. They don't introduce them to anything. Right. I know, I know. Yeah. If, if, that's, if that's all you're talking about, but the term just bothers the fire out of me because the idea of, of believing being easy is a, is a myth. The hardest thing you'll ever do yeah. is believe. Amen. The most difficult thing that you and I will ever do is believe. God. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a difficulty that we have in believing that God will save us. Yeah. The devil, hey, the devil puts up roadblocks and he says, you know, you're too far gone. God can't save you. I had an uncle that's with the Lord now, and uh, man, I, I got burdened for him. And before my wife and I got married, happy Valentine's Day, by the way, to all of you. And uh, uh, and uh, that's my Valentine there saying a minute ago. And uh, she was the young one looking one right there. And uh, so I, my, my uncle Ralph, I, I, my uncle Ralph, my aunt Honey, she was from uh, Germany. And my uncle Ralph and my aunt Honey, 
Man, I loved them to death. I was a little boy. They were like a second mom and dad to me. I, I, matter of fact, I got in trouble a few times. I'd go to their house and mom would get mad at me when I come home because I'd tell her how good my aunt, honey, she's German. Man, she'd make big old German pancakes. Everything, she, she, she made food that would, I mean, if you didn't eat it, it'd eat you. I mean, and, and I'd come home, mom say, you like her better than you do me. And I'd say, well, no, I, no, not really. I just like her food. And, uh, but, but I'd go up there and stay with them. And I got burdened about them. I, I, I got burdened because they were lost and, and they'd never made a profession of faith. They really knew nothing about the Lord. On, on my wife, on our honeymoon, we made it a purpose to, uh, to travel back by and we stayed with them for a little while. And I sat there at the table and I talked to my Uncle Ralph and, and he said to me, he said, Travis, notice this. He said, I believe what you're saying. He said, but I think it would be wrong of me. After all these years, I've lived the way I've lived. He said, I think it'd be wrong of me now to just go ahead and accept Jesus. I've heard a lot of people say Yeah. He said, that wouldn't be right. He said, that, he said, that wouldn't be right. And I said, Uncle Ralph, I said, that's why Jesus died on the cross so that you could have a home Amen. in heaven. I said, matter of fact, the thing about that is that if you and I, if we die without the Lord, hell is forever. Do you know why hell is forever? Because you're there paying a debt you can't pay. Amen. The, 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 sin, uh, the wages of sin is death, and death and hell is cast into the lake of fire, and that's an eternal debt. I can't pay that debt. You'll never pay it, but Jesus paid it all. Right. Yep. I'm glad for the day after they moved back down to West Virginia, he was sitting on the front porch of my mom and dad's house on the back porch, and I talked to my Uncle Ralph, and we prayed. He bowed his head and prayed and asked the Lord to save him. Amen. Well, I'm glad for that. Amen. Amen. The devil will tell you everything in the world. He'll tell you to wait till another time. And I mean, it's not easy to believe. It's, I mean, it's difficult to believe. I mean, there's struggles. Uh, Angelia sitting right over there. I remember the night she got saved. She made a profession of faith. And I was about ready to whip her. I mean, I mean, because she, something was wrong and God was dealing with her heart and convicting her heart. And I said, what's wrong with you? And she, oh. Just looked all mad at me. I, I had to go on and go on. I mean, it took about two hours to get through that stubborn head. And finally she looked at me and she said, Daddy, I'm not saved. I said, why didn't you just tell me that? And I said, let's get it settled. Took the Bible out and we looked through the Bible and looked through the verses. She prayed and asked the Lord to save her. Amen. I preached at, a, at the Regency Retirement Home in Taze Valley. There was a fellow there, white hair, solid white hair, white beard. I didn't plan to tell you this stuff tonight, but I just want you to know it's not easy to believe. Uh, there was a fellow there. I didn't know who he was. His name was Andy, Andy Viglianca. If y'all remember in, in Charleston, he used to be the North Pole Ice Company over on Patrick Street. Andy was the owner of that. And uh, old, old Andy was 92 or 93 years old at the time. And he'd sat right over there in the back. And, and uh, Andy told me, he said, I'm not saved. He was Catholic. I preach and, and I ask Andy one time, I said, Andy, when are you going to get saved? And he said, well, I asked him to shave me this week. And I said, you know what I'm saying. He said, I know, I know. He said, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. One day I walked up to him. I said, Andy, when are you going to get saved? And he said, I did. He said, I got saved this week. I said, what do you mean? He said, I did what you said to do. He said, I called on the name of Jesus. He said, I prayed and asked him to save me. You know, you say, well, did he, did it, you know, when folks are in a nursing home, you know, it's not like they give up a whole lot. Amen. But I'll tell you what he did. He moved up about four chairs. If that makes anybody feel better. Amen. He brought forth fruit, meat for repentance. And he'd get his songbook out and sing. And you know what? There was a burden lifted. Yep. Old Andy. There was a difference. Amen. There was a change. I remember in that same place, there was a little lady there named Neva. Neva was 94, 94, 95 years old. Andy was younger. When Neva was a young lady, she'd gone to church and someone tried to drag her down the aisle in the church service and she got hardened against God. Yeah. Yeah. And she had sat back there and, and, and worried and fretful and, and, and uh, tried to talk to her and she just would never get saved. One day, a little lady from our church came to the service and she stayed behind and she talked to Miss Neva for an hour or two. And I got home and she called me and she said, Pastor, I just wanted you to know something. She said, Miss Neva, pray and ask the Lord to save her tonight. Amen. Amen. It's not easy to believe. I, I got saved when I was seven years old. 
That night, I, 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 I'd gone to sleep in church and I was on my way home and the preacher had preached on leprosy. And man, I had it. I had a little bump right there and I had leprosy. I knew I was dying, but, I, but he preached too long and he went to sleep. And whatsoever man soweth, that's so he also reaps. So I've reaped that many times now. And, uh, but I went to sleep and on the way home, mom didn't know this, but I was under conviction. God was dealing with my heart. I've been raised in church my whole life. Yeah, but I knew I was lost and God was dealing with me that night. But I went to sleep and missed the invitation. She had no idea. I never said a word to her. We didn't make it but a quarter mile from church, from Hurricane Bible Church. And she said to me, she said, Travis, you keep going to sleep in church. You're never going to get saved. She didn't know it, but hell had become real to me that night. I knew I was lost. I knew I was on my way to hell. And I, I started to say the words, but there was something that was telling me not to. There was something telling me not to. And finally, I looked up and I said, Mom, I don't, I don't want to go to hell. I want to be saved. Amen. Would you believe? Now, this is her, her side of the story. She said, whenever I said that to her, there was something said to her, well, just have him wait till he gets to church and let the preacher talk to him. Now, you know what? That's how the devil operates. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank God, though, she said, get the Bible, Travis. And I got the Bible and she said, read this verse and read this verse and on the way home from church. I didn't wait. But on a Tuesday night, seven years old, I prayed and asked the Lord to save me. When I got home, I called my preacher. I called the other preacher. That next night I went to church and the preacher, I was seven years old. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, Brother Travis got something you want to say. And I said, no, I didn't have anything I wanted to say. <laughs> And they, but I made a public profession of faith that night. We don't have to be ashamed of the Lord, but I'm going to tell you something. It's not, it's hard to believe. Now here's the story tonight. I, I'm, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I'm glad heaven and you folks are the same way that you've experienced God's amazing grace. And, and you know, you know what it is. Our burdens are rolled away at Calvary. You know what it is to be saved and what a joy it is and what a blessing it is. But tonight, you know, the children of Israel had come out of Egypt and they were marching toward Canaan land, preacher. They were going yeah. toward Canaan land. And, and we miss this a lot of times, but, but a pastor is heart and a pastor's burden is, is to not just to see people saved, but to get people to the promised land. Amen. To get people to the place where God wants them to be. I mean, God has a place in our life, a, a place of surrender. And, and if we just get to that place, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not a second definite work of grace. It's not some dumb thing like that. It's not, it's, it's just, it's just being where God would have you to be and yep. being in a, in a place of surrender and saying, like the Apostle Paul said, the moment he got saved, Lord, what wouldst thou have me to do? And the thing that I'm yeah. certain tonight that could bring revival to our nation would if, if all God's people just got to the place where we say, God, what do you want me to do? Amen. I'm yours, God, 100%. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Have thine own way, Lord. Thou art the potter. I'm the clay. And so God was bringing the children of Israel. It wasn't just God's will to get them out of Egypt. God didn't just want them to wander in the wilderness. They chose to wander in the wilderness. Amen. They got to Kadesh Barnea. And they got to the wilderness. And, and Moses, and, and uh, it, it's, they're ready to go in. God's paved the way. But somebody, I'm going to tell you who it was. It's Lucifer. The devil came along and he said to somebody, he said, now, wait a minute here. He said, are you sure this is a good idea to go into Canaan land? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe you better check this thing out just to make sure. And they came to Moses and Moses said, uh, well, what do you reckon we ought to do? That's a sad part on Moses' part. And they said, well, let's send some spies in. Send in 12 spies. We'll choose a man from each tribe to represent us. And you all know the story. You know the song, I reckon. Ten were bad and two were good. They went out. They went into the land of uh, spies and the Kadesh Barnea and into the Canaan land, in the promised land. And they seen the grapes of Eskel and they seen all that was there and, and what a wonderful land it was. But they said, you know what? There's giants in that land. Right. We can't do it. And old Caleb, the Bible said in Numbers chapter 14 that he was a man of a different spirit. Amen. Right. 
Thank God. Hey, by the way, that's why y'all's here on a Wednesday night because you're people of a different spirit. And that's not to look down on anybody else. But the reason why there's some folks that are, are would come to church if it was for no other reason to watch the paint peel off the walls is because they have a different spirit about them. They, they, they've decided, you know what? Hey, being in God's house, this is an important thing. It's not just some casual thing. If I feel like it, if nothing Amen. else is going on, yeah. but I want to be in the house of God. Hey, that's a person of another spirit. Now, I understand that there are hindrances at times. There's times that you want to be here and you can't be here. But there's a whole lot of Christians today, and I believe, I'm not going to tell you they're not saved, but they're just satisfied. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Stand still. That's right. That's not cross over. Well, I'm afraid. I just don't know. I just don't know if God can provide or not. 20, 21 years ago, and this is not about me, this is about the Lord, but 21 years ago, we uh, started the church in a storefront building in Kanawha City. Mm-hmm. 21, 22 years ago, something like that. We had just been married about a year, and uh, the Lord had burdened my heart to, to start a church there and uh, found a storefront building. The lady we rented it from was uh, the mother of the Cassus I people, Miss Agnes Cassus, Greek Orthodox. She said, What are you going to do with this building? I said, Well, we're going to start a church in it. She said, oh, What? And, 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 and she was all about the money and all about the thing. And uh, she said, you're going to start a church. She said, how do you do that? I said, I don't know, but God does. She said, well, who's going to come? I said, I ain't sure yet. I got to go find them. Amen. I mean, listen, and that was the conversation. She said to me, she said, I only do this building on a two year lease. And I thought, man, I don't want to commit to a two year lease. I, I mean, my faith ain't that strong. I said, God, how about a one-year lease? I said, how about, how about if we can get her to agree to a one-year lease? Then I'll figure out a way to pay for that. On the way over there, I mentioned that to my wife, and I never said a word to the lady, never said a word to her. I was walking through the building, and she said, uh, she said, you know, I usually don't do this. She said, I only do a two-year lease. She said, but I was thinking a little bit ago. She said, uh, how about if I just let you have this on a one-year lease? That's the Lord. Later on, we wanted to get the other building, the other side of the building, and, and she wanted to go from uh, f- uh, five seventy five dollars uh, to double that, but she said, I'll take $50 off. I think I'd make it $1,100, something like that, wouldn't it? Five seventy five, five dollars yeah, dollars yeah, take off $50. And I said, no, that's way too much. She said, well, what do you, what do you think we ought to do? I said, $900 is the most we can do. She said, oh, no, I could never do that. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, she probably still had her first dollar bill she ever had. She called me back five minutes and she said, I don't know why I'm doing this. She said, but I'll do that. And you know, God provided every bit of that. Amen. God took care of that. But here's the reason I tell you that. I was driving out on a country road out on the backside of Putnam County. And I, I drove by the, 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 the farm there of an old, preach, uh, an old uh, church member. And I'd been going to that church some. And I stopped and talked to him. And, and uh, he, like so many others, made a point to let me know it can't be done. You can't do that. You'll starve. I've been on a diet ever since. And if they said you'll starve to death. God gave my wife and I, we've had 12 children. We've got one in heaven. None of them have starved to death. Amen. Wow. They're, they're, they're all, God's provided for them. If I told you tonight how many diapers we bought, I'm probably a millionaire. If I, I, I mean, and, and how much food we bought and, and, all, and how much gasoline. I can't even begin to tell you. How much money that God has allowed to pass through these hands. I don't have any of it. It's through, passed through, clear through. Amen. But my father owns everything. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills beneath the cattle. That's right. Listen, hey, God said, all I want you to do is live day by day. All I want you to do is believe me. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All we have to do is follow. Strength for the day is mine all the way. All we have to do is follow. And day by day, God, give us this day our daily bread. That's all God's looking for is some people that believe Him. Amen. They'll just yeah, trust Him. That's right. I've said this before. If, the, if people aren't looking at you funny... You're not doing something right. Yeah. And what are you doing? What do you mean? Hey, I, what a wonder, wonderful thing tonight if as a church, if we just said, you know what? I believe God can do, and you fill in the blanks. Yeah. Hey, I believe with God all things are possible. Yeah. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. We've got a great God tonight. There's nothing too hard for God. Right. We just need to believe Him. Amen. We Amen. live in a generation today that we're programmed to 
wonder and to yeah. question and to doubt. And, and, and we're told, well, you know, preacher, this is the Laodicean church age. It may be, it may not be, but that ain't no excuse for me not to believe that God's Amen. able to do all things. Amen. That we say to our young Amen. generation, there's no hope. Just give up on America. Just let the devil have it. It's all over. It's all said and done. Let the sodomites take over. I want to tell you tonight, there's a God in heaven and he said for us to occupy until he comes. And I don't have a mind to let him take over. Amen. I don't think we ought to. Amen. I don't think we ought to just turn them over and let our children be subject to growing up in Sodom. Right. No. Yeah. That's I don't right. think so. Amen. Amen. I think we ought to pray and trust God when we go to our prayer calls, calls it. We ought to believe when we pray. He that cometh to God must believe, must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said of Elijah that he prayed fervently. We just don't believe. Yeah. I'm, I have to remind myself, and by the way, this verse said to do this daily. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, yeah. as in the provocation. You read that in Numbers chapter number 14. I won't be much longer tonight, but in Numbers chapter number 14, they got to that place and they said, Moses, we can't do it. Old, old Caleb. He rent his clothes. He got mad. Amen. I like that. Amen. He got angry. He said, hey. He said, if God said we can do it, we can do it. And old Joshua said, I'm with Caleb. Amen. And Moses said, I'm with them boys. But he got outvoted. And God came down and God let him know. He said, I'm, he said, I'm done. He said, this whole generation. He said, you're going to wonder 40 years. He said, that's one year for yeah. every day you had a spy over there right. doubting me. Yeah. One, one, 40 years. He said, all this generation, you're going to die. Yeah. He said, yeah. but your children. He said, I'm going to have mercy on them. He said, Joshua and Caleb, they're going to live. And he said, they're going to see that land. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And he said there, he said, the children that you said would die in the wilderness that I would... They said, God, you're going to let our kids starve to death. Isn't that something? Yeah. God said, y'all will be going and them children, I'll take them in. Yeah. You read that chapter. Yeah. Years ago, I read that chapter and I realized something. Here's what I want you to realize tonight. The point of moving forward. The point of going forward in your Christian life is always at the same place yeah. of going back. They said, we'll just go back. You either go forward or you go back. Yep, yep. The Christian right. life is a forward life. Yep. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced tonight that I can't go back to being unsaved. Amen. You, I'm, I'm, I've been grafted in. I'm, my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm, I'm not just not just Baptist doctrine, but I believe I'm saved and kept and sealed and secured and all the rest of that stuff. Amen. Amen. But I don't want to go back as a believer to a place where I just stand idly by and wander in the wilderness yeah. waiting to die. I want to go forward. I feel bad for Moses. God took him up on the mountain and said, Moses, I can't let you go in, right. but I can let you see it. Yeah. I don't want to just see it. Amen. I want to, I want to go forward in my yeah. Christian life. Amen. I thank God for a preacher here. I thank God for people here tonight who want to go forward. Yeah. Amen. Years ago, I left church on a, on a prayer meeting night, and I had a fellow with me named Larry Hensley. Larry's with the Lord now. Larry was a mission man, and he come from Columbus. I had a rap sheet a mile long. I never, I never told anybody. He got arrested every other day, he, and uh, just, just drugs and stuff since he was a young man. But Larry got saved, and he lived over in St. Albans. But Larry was scared plumb to death of the police. Every time he'd see him, he'd duck. He wasn't a very big guy, but he was scared to death. And we was riding home. I had a little old S10 truck and just, just looked like it ought to be ridden a junk heap. And we was riding along and uh, lights came on. Police officer, St. Albans police came by and pulled me over. Larry scared to death. I mean, he's trembling in the seat. He thinks they've got me now. I, I, I pull over. Roll my window down. I said, uh, officer, what's the problem? He said, uh, was you down at the river? I said, no, I wasn't down at the river. He said, where you been? I said, I've been at church. 
He said, what church was you at? I said, well, the one I preach at. He said, are you sure you wasn't down at the river? I said, I'm sure. I wasn't down at the river. He said, are you sure? I said, I promise you, I've been at church. I said, this fellow's been with me. Larry's over there trembling, hiding in the floor. He don't help my case any. And I said, can I ask you a question, please? I said, could you tell me why you pulled me over? He said, where's your rearview mirror at? I said, I don't know. The kids knocked it off. I said, I, he said, you need to put a rear view mirror on there. I said, okay. I said, is that all you got? And he said, yeah. He said, put your mirror up. I said, okay. I think of that story years ago. They asked West Virginia coach Bob Huggins about the rear view mirror. And his, he said he was riding with his daddy in his truck. And he said, daddy, why don't you have a rear view mirror? He said, son, you can't live life looking in the past. He said, you got to go forward. Go. Grace for the day is mine all the way. All I have to do is follow. Today is a day of salvation. Harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. This Hebrews, the book of Hebrews was written, I'm certain, to help to convince those unbelieving and the believing Jews that Jesus was the answer. Amen. 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 And Jesus is the answer. There's, you say, well, how many sins can he forgive all of them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Going, going, going. All my sins are going. But here's the thing. You got to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth in the salvation. With the, mouth, with the heart man believeth in the mouth confession is made in the salvation. All right. For whosoever yeah. shall call on the name of the Lord yeah, shall be saved. Amen. Now, if you're saved tonight, when we go to our prayer closet, let's, let's go there like we believe it. Amen. We, we want to pray for our church. Let's pray for our church like we believe This is a prayer meeting. You know what? The only hope for America, it's not the upcoming election. We ought to pray Amen. about that. But I'll tell you what, the hope for our nation is some Christians who believe God. Amen. Amen. You say, well, the drug problem's just too bad. There's nothing we can do about it. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Our nation's too far gone. With God, all things are possible. That's right. All, all I reason I come here tonight when the preacher asked me to come, and after I said yes, the only reason I come here tonight is to just say to you folks, let's believe God. Amen. Let's, 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 let's realize tonight that we don't have a dead God that's in the tomb somewhere. Amen. We, have the, we serve the living God, the God of Abraham, Amen. the God of Isaac, the God of Elijah, the God of Jacob is our God. And God said, all the earth will see my glory. When Jesus was about to go to the cross, he said, Father, glorify uh, thy name. And uh, he said, I have glorified it and I will glorify it. That verse said about partakers of Christ. That's what he wants us to do tonight. He wants us to glorify his name. Not about ourselves, but about him. Amen. To God Amen. be the glory. Great things he had done. Amen. Amen. The Heavenly Father, help us tonight. God, as we have invitation, Lord, as, as, the, as the invitation is played, I pray tonight, dear Lord God, that you... Work in such a way tonight, Lord, that Satan would not get the glory. He would not get the victory tonight, Lord. We know he's a liar and the father of it. God, help us not to believe the lies. God, help us to be a believing people. Lord, if there's anyone here tonight that's never put their faith and trust in you, Christ, I pray, Lord, they do it tonight. Lord, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Would you stand tonight? Do you believe God? Do you believe that with God all things are possible? What, what is it tonight? What's the burden of your soul? What's the burden of your heart? What, what matter do you need to bring to Him tonight? Would you find a place of prayer? And if you need the Lord tonight, you come. I'd be glad to talk to you tonight about the Lord. If you need to come, you come.